everybody, in this video we're going to be working on uh, doing a belt change out uh, on this snowblower Craftsman 5.5 horsepower with the Cummings, a 24 inch cut. And it's a pretty decent machine. I mean, it's got the transmissions a little underpowered, uh, but it's a nice machine and it's very similar to most of the Craftsman offerings, MTD offerings. So it is a three speeder. Uh, so this really has what, uh, three speeds, and does it have reverse? I don't even know if it has reverse. But the key of this video is, is we're going to crack the case. we got to get in here, we got to separate the case a little bit, and kind of get the sandwich apart, get in there, and again, identify what belts these are. So we're going to go through that whole thing together. Uh, stay tuned, and uh, let's see how it comes out. Hopefully we get this machine running good for the customer. It has a, a little transmission multi-speed on it that's the cable's off, and he, he tells me, don't touch it. It goes in second gear, right? Don't don't touch it, right? I'm like, okay, right? What do you mean? I'm the mechanic. I'm gonna. You want me to fix it? Oh, don't touch it. Oh, let me take a look at it, right? Let's. We gotta take a look at this, all right? We're gonna take a look at it and see why the cable is off. He's like, oh, I didn't even know the cable was off. Don't touch it. Um, so we're gonna touch it, all right? We're gonna touch it. We're gonna find out what's wrong with this thing. Try to get this thing running again. It looks worse than it is. There's life left in it if we can keep the price down. Um, let's dig into this and uh, we'll see what's going on with it. Okay, we're going to dig in here before we split the case uh, because what we want to do is we just want to go over everything that's in here together so that we know that that's done because once I split the case, I'm going to pull these belts out. We need to order them and the holidays are coming. It's the end of the week, so I may not see this all until next week. Uh, so we'll have to put this project aside. Uh, we're going to start off with uh, just a general evaluation, and that's one of the things is, is that I can actually see the belts are cracked up in here. Um, there's no cover on this. It's a closed, sealed transmission, very much like a lawnmower transmission. But there are some things we can do. We're going to we're going to lubricate all these different areas in here, the gear. I think on this one, we're going to put a little grease on the gear, and then we're going to spray it with some chain wax. Let's take the tires off. Uh, we're going to get to the axles, make sure that those axles are, are good and clean, that we can get the tires off. We're going to treat the tires with um, some uh, stop leak. And uh, so let's get forward on this. Let's see if this will take it off. All right, good. Now we're going to put a little bit of blue Loctite on these. Fine thread. And not bad, right? Make sure these are clean and all that. And We'll actually put uh, bring these on the table on the table uh, work table, and we're, they they, they uh, pop the beads so easily. So we're going to want to make sure it's good and clean. Take the air out, and then we'll put our stop leak in, and then refill it before we put it back on. Gas is already leaking. I can't help that. There's no valve or anything. That's why I didn't want to push it over on its side, but it'll stop eventually. So you can see the bearings and the shafts are very dry and we're actually going to want to clean this as best we can. Here's the here's a bearing. And you can see they're a little bit worn so in another year, a couple of years or whatever, we're going to want to replace those. But in the meantime, we can actually get this cleaned up. So let's go get our wire wheel. We're going to wire wheel this one. We'll push the shaft the other direction as far as we can. Okay. We'll get that side. Sometimes you can tell when you look in here. You can actually see some oblonging. There's a very small amount of it, probably suffering more from compression and just dryness. We'll clean these up. I'm going to do the other side and we'll be back with some crocus, crocus cloth. Wow. I just dropped my bearings or bushings right into the container. And we're gonna take uh, just a little bit of crocus, dip it in my container, and just start working it. Now, an area that I'm most concerned with is where the bushing is, the bushing rise. So that's all we care about, really. But we'll go over the whole shaft. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but we're gonna service it. Let's see how that looks. Oh, much better. Yeah, that's perfect. Just a little bit of a spot there. Now I'll just focus a little bit more on that 
sparing surface or bushing surface. That should do it. All right, let me go do the other one. Yeah, that's better. All right, so before we put the tires on and everything, we're gonna spend a little bit of time just with some grease. So I got this axle out, and I'm just really gonna just wipe the whole axle with grease, especially around the bushing area. Now the plastic bushings hold up really good. They make a bronze oil light for bigger machines and a little bit nicer. All right, that's enough for now. Now we'll put a little bit of grease in our in our bushing. That should do it. We'll slip our bushing on. All right? You want grease because these are plastic rims and they don't get stuck. And you can take your screwdriver or something and just pass it through if you want. That's what helps to transfer the grease. That should be fine. There you go. Okay. Now, we'll put some on the gear, even though we're going to spray the gear. But we're going to lube up what we can in here. Because this is really the wear point. Just a little bit on the smaller gear. So we're going to put some chain wax on the big gear. We're going to put chain wax on everything. If everything's in good shape, you can generally just use chain wax. But because this hasn't been done and the bearings are a bit worn, we're going to get some in there. All right, and that's it for this thing. Now there's an area here. We're going to blow it too. This this actually this actually moves slightly. There's a pivot. We'll get it from the top as well. There's a pivot there, and there's some pivot. There's a spring here. I'm not worried about getting it on the belts. There's a pivot there as part of the transmission, right? Because we're replacing the belts. So we want to get up into all the areas that move, and that's all there is on this machine. There's no disc down here, and we can. I can't pull anything through just yet because the cables are, you know, kerplunk. There's a spot here on the side. Any pivot point. And this will wax up. And we'll get the gear good. That's it. And we're done. But it kind of moves. Okay. I'm just pulling on the cable. So we got to go through the cabling. We'll do that in a little bit. Well, I'm going to just wipe that and blow it out. I'm going to remove the air by removing the valve, because you gotta take the valve out. I shook this container up. This is what I like. I like to use the flat out. Now, I mentioned in a lot of my other videos when I use this, um, they make a version of this that is a little thinner, and uh, so it's. I think it's a little bit more useful for sealing beads. But this is designed, it's a sportsman formula, so it is designed for you know off-roading vehicles, or you know even lawnmowers and tractors. But it's better for, I think it's better for holes and punctures and a little bit less of the bead seal thing. All right, I'm just going to put a little bit in. Now, another thing that would be nice too for bead seal issues is flat out or right not flat out. Um, yeah, whatever that stuff is in the can. This is called flat out. Um, you know, just that spray f stuff in the can. All right, I'm going to put this up to 14 PSI. I'll do the other one and I'm just going to put these on and we'll be back in a minute. All right, so we're gonna put a little bit of blue lock on there, on the threads, because you know, you don't want these things backing out and then falling on the ground in the snow and stuff, and then the wheel falls off, right? And customer will be very upset. Always sort the threads by hand. That'll do it. This one's low power. All right, feels nice, spins nice. I'm going to spin this around a little bit to get the uh, additive into the tires. All right, it's like 14 pounds on these, so they're real solid. They're in good shape. There's no 
I don't see any like uh, you know oxidation damage to it. There's no crinkling and crackling and cracking of the rubber, so it looks real good. If you want, you could dress it with something. All right, let's crack the case. Okay, so with most of these systems, uh, the bolts are right here, right? And the case actually splits apart. So you got two on this side and two on the other side. And that's either half inch or a 9 16 That looks half inch to me. So I'm going to loosen those bolts up. And some of them just slip out, slip apart. Others, you have to take the bolts out all the way. We won't know until we get in there. And I'm going to start loosening them up. Let's pull this side out. Wow. So they're probably going to be stuck on there. Okay. That's not a very powerful gun, though. Okay, here it goes. All right, let's see. Well, this one probably has to come out, but it might be its pivot. Usually the pivot is the bottom. All we're going to put in the bottom one. Okay, make sure the threads are caught. We'll take out the top one and we're going to do the same thing with the other. And we're probably going to have to make something to sort of prop this up, which when we get into trouble, I mean, when we get that much further, we'll find out. Now that might be too, too high. Well, that's kind of nice, right? And maybe I'll throw some of these tubies on the other side so it doesn't collapse in on us and break our fingers. Yeah, I got the, uh, I got a two by underneath this as well. So we got this guy on this side. Okay, now we're going to get in a little tighter and we're going to work this off. Now this, we could probably just take this off from here and just keep it out of our way. And we should be able to work this off. Now, um, a couple of things you can do to make your life a little easier. I'm going to pull the plug out that way. Uh, one, it can't accidentally start. Not that that can happen, but you don't want it to happen. The other thing is, too, is we can turn the engine over and the pulleys over by hand and by wrenches and not have compression to fight against. I'm just going to reaching my hand in there. And just be careful, right, because you don't want it to have an issue. Now, on this one, there is a, a guide, like a brake, okay? And that's what this does. So we have to pull that towards us. So down here, so as we grab this piece here, you'll see it. See it loosening up, right? So that's what we have to kind of move out of our way to get the belt out. So I'm going to pull this back. That'll free up the belt. Here's our first belt. Now this is the most common one to, to pass on. And we'll look for some numbers on it. I don't see any numbers. We're gonna measure it, right? Yeah, it's all broken in a little bit. Now on this one here, this one's a little bit different. All right, so we are going to have to remove this piece here. So there's a clip and a pin. And that pin is right here. And I'm gonna free up my hands, we'll pull that out. And then we'll lift this pin up, and then this piece should you know, be moved out of the way. All right, now this won't pass over this pulley, so we're going to have to remove this pulley next. And this just disconnects here. You see this little cable? So we'll be able to do that, because we need to get this belt off. Okay, we got it. Fortunately, that part came off. <clears throat> well, there we go. You can see it's coming off. Okay, so this one has like a kind of a clutch, multi-speed setup. Come straight off just like that, see? Very nice. Now, As you can see here, right, we gotta loosen up the, the uh, look at the routing. So what I'm gonna do is, let me get the other camera in there. I wanna show the routing <clears throat> a little closer. Okay, see the routing? 
and through here. So all we have to do is just pull the tensioner out of the way and that belt will come right off, see? Okay, so I'm just gonna pull the, the tensioner up, pull the belt, That's it. It's pretty simple. Nice system. We're going to clean all that up. Here's another belt. No numbers on it. Uh, it almost had a number. It's uh, kind of got ward, worn off. Ward off. All right, guys. I'm going to just wipe this down in here. And we're going to measure the belt on the bench, both belts. Try to figure out what we have. Okay, so I've written down the information over here. Craftsman model number 31A-3CD. E799 and then there's some numbers underneath it. So this is the auger belt and I just start off with putting a mark and we're going to take our this cheapy stuff that you can get. Um, this is inches and this is in millimeters and centimeters right so we'll, we'll do this one. I'm going to go around the outside of the belt which is really all you need to do and we'll come back to the beginning 26 and 3 quarters to 26 and 7 eighths. All right, and it's stretched, so we're going to be looking for a belt in that category. We're going to do our search first. It's amazing that this belt didn't break, right? Straight off. I'll do the same thing. Now, this is the power belt. And it doesn't matter where you put it, so we're just going to put a mark. And here's our mark. And it looks like it's the same thing. Um, 26 and 3 quarters. So, maybe they got smart. Let me write that down. Maybe they got smart and they just decided to go with the same belt. Looks like they did. Right? One's a little more stretched than the other. I'm going to go look through my inventory, and uh, but I'll get back to you guys in a little bit when I have belts in hand, whatever that is. Just try to get in close. So I lubed in here, stuck my straw in with the chain and cable lube, and you can see the belt position. This goes this way, right, because this is like a keeper. What happens is this is like a constant velocity type setup. So as you pull on uh, speed control, okay, when you come up, what it does is, is it applies pressure to this throwout bearing or thrust bearing, forces the belt a little higher on that pulley, and then that just changes the speed. So we got a nice belt on here. It does feel like it's a little bit loose, but uh, we'll know more when it's running. Now we got to put the belt here. We got a new belt for that too. Let me show you the other side. So what I did was I lubricated everything with grease. You have to because this is a thing that you want to grease. We want to put a little bit there. All the splines and everything up in here. Just a good grease, something that's going to stick. I mean, you could use a chain wax too, but while we're here, we're going to use a good grease. And put a little chain wax in that. Now let's put this other bearing on. Uh, belt. Okay. So to do that, we have to push this forward, all right? When you push that forward, I'll show you down there. You see that little tang down there? I'm gonna try to get you in there to see it. I hope you can see it, watch. See it? All right, and then of course on this pivot, we wanna get some chain wax on that. Okay, so I got some lube there. I got lube all up in here. Um, a little bit on the, try to get a little bit on the bearings of the pulleys. Uh, that's ready. We're ready for a test. So the only thing I got to fix now is this handle's all janked. So let me climb up there and see what I can do. This I lubricated in here. The gear shifter is working. Uh, I think I showed you that already. So we're not going to touch that until it's running because you can actually damage it. Um, yeah, uh, we're ready for a test. I got to put a little more air in. Um, Got to see, I'm going to tell him to go check to see if there's a recall on this machine. There probably is. These tires are not holding air well, and a lot of the plastic rims 
had recoil, uh, recoils on them, so maybe he can just get a good fresh set of tires and and rims, and uh, we can just end it. Yeah, let's see what happens. That should be warm enough. Let's just pull the oil out and we'll do the finish on it now. It's running real good, nice and strong. Fresh belts, everything's golden. Yeah, a little bit of rainbow, but oh, it needed an oil change, bad. You gotta pull the dipstick out so that it can drain properly. It's warm enough, let's leave it alone. All right guys, end of the day report. Star date, 20, December 2021, and I'm done with it. Right, we've done everything, we've covered over everything, we've made everything work again, and there's nothing left to do, right? We got the belts on, we got the carburetor fixed, we got the ignition, we got, uh, uh, I mean, just you name it, right? We went through everything, cable issues. Um, this thing's in nice shape. The only thing it really needs now is, I'm gonna let him do it. He can go see if there's a recall on those rims and tires. He can get himself a nice fresh set of rims and tires, and uh, he can either bring it back and I'll pop them on for him, or, Maybe a year or so, um, you know, I'll give him a quick tune-up. I'll see you guys in the next one. That's it for this one. Thanks for stopping in, guys, and it's been a pleasure. I can't wait to the next one. Yay!